Welcome back, I'm DRN and this is Mechabellum. We're going into game one of this week's tournament. I've been away, so I'm a little bit rusty. I came back and everyone was buying Vulcans every game and everything was on fire. <laughs> so let's find out what's happening. Who's our first opponent going to be? Ooh, Bear-like. For my regular viewers, you'll need no introduction, but for those of you who are new here, Bear-like is the uh, founder of the studio and lead developer on Mechabellum. I do not envy his job and have massive respect for him being as good of a player as he is and playing in and streaming tournaments in multiple languages. He is to Mechabellum what Riot Mortdog is to TFT, but with a larger personal stake in the game, seeing as he owns the studio. Right, what do we get? Oh, Giant Specialist is tempting, but oh, I've got to do it. Quick supply. Tanks and snipers, it's my favourite start. Tank carry is dead, but long live tank carry. Sorry my voice is a bit rough today. Whenever I go away, I always get a sore throat. And the uh, medicinal application of whiskey does not help. <laughs> right, let's be polite. Remind Bear like he's facing the mighty DRN. <laughs> oh boy, I shouldn't make myself laugh. That was irony, by the way. Bear-like is a far better player than I am. I just get a tournament buff when I play in tournaments, because this is what I live for. Tournament games where everything's on the line. I've slightly changed up my tank positioning. I put them four off the tower now and one forward, because leaving space for giants is so important in the current meta. And I see the mighty sledgehammer, I'm afraid, is now chaff. It's a throwaway unit that can kill other smaller units, but will die in seconds if anything big or meaty turns its gaze upon it. And I'm afraid right now that includes Vulcans, who you would expect the tank armor to counter, but the steady damage buffs have turned Vulcans into a generalist DPS. They can ignore armor by using Scorching Flame. Editing DR in here, less than 24 hours after we played this game, Bear like nerfed Vulcans. Sorry about the griping. I think we're all just getting a bit fed up facing Vulcans every game. Right, happy with this? Ooh, very vertical. He's asking for Stormcallers. Everything running in in a straight line. But that's probably around three play, really. We need to get some real chaff, some fast movers, some crawlers coming in from the back line next round, or some wasps, maybe, to force him into anti air. He's strong side with the extra crawlers here on the left. But I'm expecting him to balance out and play symmetrical. We should win this comfortably, just so many tanks is very hard to stop round one. That's why I like the quick supply. Huge tempo swing right at the start of the game. But when picking quick supply, make sure you like the 200 cost unit you're starting with, because you're going to have twice as many as normal if you do this strat, which makes it very difficult to sell out of and pivot away from your starting unit. Ooh, we might actually lose this left side. What a difference one extra set of crawlers make. I guess our midline sniper also went to the right-hand side. So it uh, compounds the difference, amplifies the effect those extra crawlers had. Oh no, this sniper. It's going to kill everything. No, the timing of this tower kill is horrific. Just watch. Ugh. This sniper's playing Duck Hunter. Line him up. One kill, two kills, three kills, four kills, five. Full house. <laughs> That's rough. At least we got the tower. Got the XP on the tanks. The sooner we hit level two on them, the safer we'll be. All right, here we go. Ooh, damage up item. Have any of our tanks got close to level two? Nope, not even close. <laughs> Dream on. His sniper's level two, but he won't put a damage item on it. I think we'll take it anyway and put it on these sledgehammers. Shore up this left side, and we can always sell them to get it back and move it onto a better unit later on. Let's grab some chaff of our own to protect our tanks. Can't have that snipe having a field day all game long. Let's put them two behind the tower so we can drop some fangs in front of them if we need them. And let's match his strong side over here on the left, which I'm sure he's going to balance out, but we'll see. Right, moment of truth. Any cheeky missiles? This is the turn for them. He's got a big turn coming up on round four with his free rhino arriving. Ooh, he's playing slow. This isn't like that, like. Normally I'm the one who talks too much. Editing DR in here, I'll save you 90 seconds of him rambling. Okay, he's taken two more snipers and leveled up his big sniper. And he's sitting on the damage item, so he must be sitting on 100 extra gold in his pocket as well. Hmm, early float, expect an early giant. Or he's setting up for an assault marksman play, we'll see. I know Bellet loves playing assault marksman. Hmm, interesting, his crawlers behind the tower and behind the tanks get a much better spread than ours do. I think that's because they're locking onto our tanks that are a bit more side to side. So I might want to put some forward fangs to bait them in a straight line. If yeah, I'm going to go for the stormcaller play. We'll see, though. Yeah, this looks very comfy now. He doesn't have the chaff advantage anymore, so his snipers are busy not killing off our tanks that quickly. He needs to find a way to win the chaff battle to get them back on target quick and clean. I'm tempted to go range sniper here so that we can outlevel his snipers in case the game devolves into a sniper versus sniper battle. But that's pretty rare these days. There's too much chaff going around. But yeah, if your opponent doesn't build enough chaff, just punish them with snipers. Or my personal least favourite unit in the game, hackers. If all they've got is medium size and above. Hmm, free units. That's a lot of fangs. Fire badges are probably a better bet, but they overlap too much with our tanks. Dare I do it? Yeah, let's risk it for a biscuit. One of my friends, Clint Leetwood, really rates having some high-level fangs early, but I'm not sure I can afford taking the range tech on them, so I'm not sure I can protect them right now. But this gives us the option of going fang carry in the mid-game. Ugh, I really want range on them if I had 50 more gold. 
I just can't afford to miss unit drops this early in the game. Always buy units. Two units a turn. Sometimes three. Otherwise you fall behind on board strength. Because we're limited by how many units we can drop per turn. If you don't make the most of them, you'll suffer. Let's level these snipers up. Double the stats, half the price. Can't say fairer than that. I've got 150 left over, which is almost always an extra set of chaff. Yeah, let's just drop them here in the middle. Keep these guys safer. Hmm, now we look very vulnerable to Stormcallers now, but never mind. You can never cover everything. Let's see what he's going for. Ooh, Vulcan Phoenix. Classic combo. Little bit disappointed to be facing Vulcan round three, but never mind. It's a tournament game. People are going to play the current meta units. Even if it is Bell like himself, I might give him a little bit of ribbing for it, though. Because he must know they're overtuned right now. He's happy picking it when I'm showing tanks that are close to level two with armor as an option. And last week he said on stream that Vulcans didn't have a high win percent. Yet somehow they're in every game. You have to be careful balancing by win percent. If it's in every game, it'll never have a 50% win rate. What you should really look at is the counter to it, and the win rate of the counter. But what counters a Vulcan that doesn't get stuck on chaff that the Vulcan's already cleared it from your side of the board? Let's just remind him that armor tanks are currently underperforming. I do have a bias, I love tanks. And in a Vulcan meta, armor tanks should be fantastic, and yet for some reason they're terrible. Stop it! Don't pull the tiger's tail! Remember what he did to fortresses after you beat him with forts. Oh, don't do it. Stop it! He knows more about the win rates and the balance of the game than you do. No, now you're just going to get anti-air barrage nerfed as well. Can't help yourself, can you, blabber mouth? But yeah, one Vulcan with a damage item killed my entire army and tanked everything. And it's already going to level up. Oh, this is going to be rough. <laughs> He's right, I do have a lot of chaff. But you're meant to have a lot of chaff. It'd be rude not to. And in my defense, he didn't know I was going to take five units of fangs this turn. Six! I'm counting! Right, let's focus on the game, and enjoy it for what it is. This is a tournament match. Hmm, we've got just enough fangs to cover the wasp swarm and the underground threat. So I think the shield drop is the best bet for us. Is he vulnerable to a unit summoning, though? Hmm... He doesn't have much anti-air, but I don't want to drop them at the back, they'll get picked off. Maybe if I drop them at our back, we can use them as late chaff that distract his phoenixes and snipers. And maybe provoke an overinvestment in uh, anti-air. And let's grab those storm calls I was talking about at the start. He is very bunched up right now. That'll give us a bit more damage on the Vulcan, and maybe pick off some of his chaff on its way through. Right, 300 left over, let's level up the tanks. Setting up for an armor turn next turn, maybe? Or we try and force him into a Scorching Flames Vulcan, which we can then EMP. Ooh, I feel like I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, though. What's Bear Light gone for? Ooh, what summoning of his own? Interesting. I would have thought our Fang presence would put that off. Ah, I'm kind of regressing what I typed. We all know Vulcan's too strong right now, but that might be the meta correcting for overproduction of chaff. It just feels very strange knowing that armor on the tanks means less than nothing. Right, okay, he's taken range on the Vulcans, but hasn't leveled up the one that hit level two. He doesn't believe in double the stats half the price. <laughs> we shall have to show him the value of leveling up units. Let's see if our level two tanks can make more of an impact now. Still missing this pack of crawls in the back right. Oh, spoke too soon, he has leveled up, and now we're in a world of pain. It's got 80,000 health and is roasting tanks in seconds. Oh dear. I thought there was light at the end of the tunnel, but it turns out it was just on fire. We are in trouble. Hmm. The only advantage we've got here is with range on the Vulcans now, and the Phoenixes don't have it. The Phoenixes are more exposed, and we can pick those off. But our chaff line is vanishing. Come on, snipers. Yes! One Phoenix down. All the tanks on this side are gone, though. This Vulcan with the damage item is going to be a nightmare to stop. So we are strong side left side, he's strong side right side. And again, punished for killing a tower too soon. The debuff's going to wear off, he's going to take our tower. Ugh. Yeah, this is not fine. At least it's only 400 damage. But we need to find an answer to this quick. Melting point or fortress? But they'll need to be backed up by top tier chaff clear to keep up. Ooh, javelin, 70,000 damage. It has 79,000 health. Is it worth javelining it? Oh no, it's going to be level 3. Never mind. Let's try and pressure his weak side. If we can kill this tower while we've still got units alive on the right hand side, we can actually take advantage of destroying the tower. Ooh, level 3 marksman. We've made our own orange man. There is hope. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Hmm. Oh yeah, we need to cover this gap as well. Oh, well, we're gonna get flanked. Feels bad buying more chaff into Vulcans, though. 
I think we have to take EMP on the snipers and we have to take armor on the tanks. EMP will disable the Vulcan's range and scorching fire if he takes it. And armor on the tanks gives us a chance for the Vulcans to get stuck on them. But yeah, with a damage item, it's kind of tough. Extra sniper on this side, because this is where the Phoenix is and the big Vulcan is. Right, looks good. Let's see what he's going for. Ooh, an extra Vulcan, perhaps anticipating this javelin. Hopefully we've got enough firepower to bring it down. Ooh, good shot if I dare say so myself. Every single tank and the Vulcan. Right, let's see how much of a difference the armor on the tanks make. They can ignore 60 damage per level, so level 2 tanks can ignore 120 damage, which is normally enough to stop a Vulcan. But he's got a level 3 Vulcan, and Scorching Flames, the tech, will burn through it anyway. But he hasn't picked it yet, and we're showing EMP, which might put him off. Because the sniper EMP would disable it. Oof, we really need these tanks on the right hand side to get levels, but there's just no way, they're evaporating in seconds. <laughs> it's so big, we need a melting point. Just look at that, those are tanks with armor and level 2. And he hasn't even taken Scorching Flames yet, oh my word. Hey, we killed it. Stormcallers and two high level snipers with EMP. And the tower debuff is just too much even for a level 3 Vulcan. Right, still in it to win it, stay focused. Just because he's got a big Vulcan doesn't mean the game is over. I couldn't tell that with the way you're whining about it. Man up and deal with it. Right, where are we at? Oh, I've got to take the fortress. He's just told me to my face that it's got a higher win rate than Vulcan. And I still run armor on them as my dark technology. The secret source that might give us an edge over these Vulcans. It's very cheap and a lot of HP. Yeah, let's get two more of them and... Do I do it? Yeah, I've got to do it. Here we go, armor. If it works, grand success. If it fails, maybe it gets a buff next patch. You never know. Oh yeah, because Belak's really going to balance the game based on a single match versus you. What fantasy planet are you on? Ooh, it would have been nice to level up these tanks. If he goes anti-missile, I'll sell the Stormcallers. I probably should level them up as well, getting a good bit of damage out from them. I'm trying to let them sit just under the radar so they don't get hard countered. Typhoons? What? Was he expecting air pivot? They're very far back, they're in the Mustang position. But they're shorter range and they move slower, so I don't think that's the right place to put them. Is he worried about my wasp summoning in two rounds time, maybe? I don't think it's worth three sets of Typhoons, though. And they're gonna struggle even with just the tanks with armor. The forts will make mincemeat of them. Well, you know what they say, if your opponent's making a mistake, don't interrupt him. Oh, what did he sell? Yeah, he sold the middle set of Typhoons. Okay, he bought them for the sell value rather than the actual impact. Gotta say, his board here looks very Stormcaller bait. Everything except the Phoenixes are on the ground and everything's very close together. The problem is Stormcallers can be hard countered in the late game, so you don't really want to over-rely on them. Has he sold a sniper? No, it's just hidden behind the tower. And there's Scorching Flame. 125% extra damage for the Vulcans. Not anymore, it's gone down to 100% the day after we played this match. Hmm. More tanks and more midline chaff of his own. He is noticing the Stormcaller impact. He's trying to prevent the EMP snipers from connecting. Whoa, a bit of a judder there. Sorry about that. Let's see how good the fortresses are. And remember, this is with armor on them as well, with 50% bonus health and damage mitigation. Hmm, I think we're going to need range on the snipers as well to keep them safe, and probably even range on the fortresses. <laughs> Problems with playing standard, you need range on everything. Oof, look at the level 2 fort, it's melting. Hang in there, big fella, we need you. No. Yeah, the brightest candles always burn shortest. Snipers are doing okay, though. If we can get one off this big orange demon of the flames, we'll be doing okay. Come on, EMP him. We need to turn his tech off. I used to use Stormcores as my EMP delivery service, but I'm afraid missiles are so easily counterable in the late game with Mustang anti-missiles, saber teeth, war factories, anti-missile devices, or just sheer amounts of chaff. That I'm afraid I've resorted to having it on snipers instead now. Instead of my old beloved quick shot. Come on, bring him down, bring him down. No, there goes our source of EMP. So much damage. We barely even scratched him then. But again, only 400 life loss, not too bad. Oh, it has to be. They've made it so incendiary bomb only shows up once if you pick it. And I do not like oil plus incendiary bomb landing on my doorstep. So uh, yeah, let's pick it to take it off the cards. And hey, if I don't like it, I'm sure he won't like it. I put it here on the midline to make it very hard to shield the entire thing. We'll kill some of our chaff though as well, but his Vulcans are doing that anyway. And uh, yeah, it would be devastating if that landed on us, so let's put a shield down. I would have loved to have taken barrier shields on the forts, but we can't afford it. And it's too early to loan, really. We're both very high on health, which is kind of impressive because it's round 7. And we've had giants in play from round 3 onwards. Balance out the snipers and 100 left over. 
He's gonna sell these. Can I punish that air pivot? No. He's got those phoenixes. Um, hmm. Is it time we take temporary range? I've only bought one unit this turn though. But what do we buy? Chaff is kind of useless with this many Vulcans. Probably should have sold these fangs thinking about it. Yeah, let's sell these fangs. They're not going to do anything. They're going to walk into fire. Right, 200 left over then. More tanks? More Stormcallers? Just levels in the tanks maybe? Hmm. Hmm, tricky, tricky, tricky. I think just more snipers to be honest. So this side has got the fire, so this side I'm going to do it over here. And I'll level up whichever tanks did the most damage, these ones. Maybe we should level the snipers up, but never mind. We are here and this is now. What the? He's got link tanks when I'm showing EMP snipers? Hmm, I guess you still get the full 120% of his health. But you're also massively exposed to melting point, which takes the entire chain down with it. Huh, haven't really thought about it. I've got a 2v2 partner who plays Link Steel Balls almost always. He goes Life Link and Life Steel. I guess with tanks you go Field Maintenance then. I guess it gives you a similar unkillable unit effect for the front line. It's a big tempo play because it'll win one round, but then I'm afraid I think it loses just because Melty Point, unless I'm vastly overestimating Melty Point's damage. We're still picking off his Phoenixes for free, nice. But yeah, holy moly, these tanks are tough to kill. We EMP one and cut it off from the chain, but then it still has tons of health. I'll be honest, I didn't have linked health tanks on my bingo card for a game versus Bear Lake, but I respect the hustle. They might need photons to give them hardening against the EMP, but that's a huge commitment again. Nice, we dealt with the small ones. It's just the big fatty with the damage item, who's been a wrecking ball all game long. I've just never quite had the opportunity to buy a melting point to deal with it. Guess we could go Overlord with cannons, but he is showing Phoenix with Sniper. Come on, kill him, please. There we go. Whew. He did not want to go down. We're getting there. Slow and steady wins the race, right? One good round and this is over. Ugh, no. Two of those cards are fantastic for a Vulcan player. Do we really need oil on the cards and on the tower? Like, pick one. But yeah, him dropping a Vulcan on my back will give me a massive problem. He can be cheeky about it and take firebomb as well. I'll just drop an oil in the middle of my units. Right, covering that right side didn't work. Let's try and cover this left side with it instead. Level you up, you've earned it. Speaking of earning it, let's level these snipers up as well. Wow, so many to level. Look at <laughs> I'm tempted to go elite. Don't forget these wasps. Where would they be best? Could drop them in his back line, but I think this is where he'll drop his. Maybe I should do a wasp pivot and go shield anti air on them. Uh, let's put them over here. Put more pressure on that big Vulcan. Let's sell these fangs. They're not going to do anything in the fire. Of course you can watch. You don't have to ask my permission. Let's get two more fortresses. Yee, we're struggling. It looks like we're doing well, but we're actually behind on board tempo. I keep meaning to buy this melting point, but I can't quite afford it. I think this is our barrier turn. So much extra health to put on the board this turn. Oh, he could do a wasp pivot here and catch me out pretty hard. I was thinking about it, but he's for sure thinking about it as well. I've just sold my fangs off. Never mind. If he does a wasp pivot, we take anti-air in the fortresses. And we'll be just fine next round. What's he gone for? Ooh, even more tanks and levels in the tanks as well. Wow. <laughs> he's double daring me to take melting point. Oh, what is this? A crawler summoning my backline? Sneaky beaky crawlers, we're ready for you. Has delayed our chaff though, but that might be in our favour. <laughs> Look at the wall of tanks, he's got so many. They're all healing, they're all linked up. Apes together, strong. <laughs> I can respect it. They're shrugging off fortress fire. Even the biggest cannons can't pierce their formation. His tank line is held. The line is holding. We can't get through. Come on, no. <laughs> Guten Tag thinks I've lost. But don't you know, Betty against me fuels me. We've got to prove him wrong. Unleash the fires of Avernus. There is vengeance to be sought. What do we say to those who doubt us? Judge me not by my words, but by my actions. And I will show you a victory in this life or the next. We can survive this. One more round, that's all we need. It's gonna hurt though. Oh, ouch. One giant surviving now and it's game over. He did take temporary range, but he didn't push like us. So he's got economic advantage now and he did disrupt our chaff line that round. So maybe he'll underestimate us. <laughs> it's gotta be the melting point. We have received Berlek's blessing while playing against Berlek. That's gotta be an achievement. Getting the exact unit you need from the free unit cards. I'm sorry Berlek, you brought this onto yourself. I'm half hoping he goes photon emission to shield his tanks from EMP and we just get the massive chain reaction as they all blow up. That's never gonna happen, but I can dream. A man can dream. And I think this is the weak link in the chain. If we pick off this side, we can take the tower. 
If I'm him, I sell that one. Let's hit the center. Not as valuable on the tanks, but more valuable on the Vulcan. And I can't risk him selling the Vulcan and rebuying it further over. Sometimes it's best to use abilities on the second best target you're offered to avoid being too predictable. Right, we're gonna push, temp range. This is the final round. Glory or defeat. We've given it our all and held a giant Vulcan at bay for hours on end. We've got a thousand to spend. I think more Stormcallers, because two melting points is enough, and a little bit more chaff clear might make all the difference. And Stormcallers are actually pretty good versus linked tanks, because they hit all the tanks at once. But I will admit they're terrible versus field maintenance tanks, because the tanks heal up what they've taken. But these Stormcallers won't be the only thing shooting at the tanks, so it should be okay. Ooh, I'm not running EMP, I thought I was. Whoops. I think Splash is going to be my best bet. Bigger impacts, and then 400 left over, level the Storm, level the tanks. And these tanks over here need a level as well, there we go. And the last hundred. No, we can sell these fangs as well. 300 left over. Nice. What can we do with 300? Ooh, nothing urgent. I guess we can get an extra set of storm calls here in the middle as well. Sorry, time was running out. I had to act fast then. Probably better options, but we are here and this is now. He's got melting point as well. He's delaying his phoenix. That's smart. I think those melting points would have been better in the center. Come on. Extra storm callers make all the difference, right? The sooner we get melting points onto those tanks, the better. Come on. Yes! Binding on one! Two's locked! Watch the tanks melt! That's how it feels! That's how it feels! <laughs> Sorry, I've been at the receiving end of this all game long. Come on! We've got so many giants left, surely we win this, come on! Yes, there goes the last of those regening tanks. Binding on one, two's a lock! Here we go, the giants are falling like dominoes! Remember, can't let a single giant survive the round or we'll lose. Come on lads, you got this. Yes, melting point versus melting point. Come on, we've got this. Hours of range, and we've got Stormcallers helping as well. Sniper's chipping in with some EMP. Beautiful. Is that lethal? Is that lethal? Yes! Well played. Good game. Still kind of shocked we won that in the end. I thought the Vulcans were going to be the death of us. That Vulcan with the damage item was so hard to kill. Alright. Um, hmm. Tricky one. I think Berlak kind of went easy on me here. The link tanks was a bit of a meme. I was lucky that free melting points came down. Um, we got blessed by Berlake in a game against Berlake, which is a bit weird. He was a bit gentle on us, didn't go heavy in the Phoenixes, but I guess he was worried about me taking anti-air barrage on the fortresses. Um, his positioning on the melting points, a little bit far out. I think I would have preferred them in the center in these little pockets, or this pocket here and this pocket here. Um, so then they could cover the strong fortresses first rather than the weak fortresses first. Um, he did push, but he didn't take temporary range in the final round, which I think is a mistake. The round he won big on was the round he had temp range and I didn't. And the round he just lost on and I won big on was the round I had temporary range and he didn't. So it shows you how powerful temporary range is on a swing round. I should have considered selling these tanks to move this improved fire control system. Um, didn't really think about it during the game. It would have been great on a melting point to burn through this lifelink set of tanks real fast. The extra 300 I had left over, if it had been 100 more, I would have got energy absorption on these uh, melting points to make them great giant killers. But I didn't have quite enough money for that. Instead, I gambled and went heavy on the Stormcallers. I should have put a missile down or taken speed on the tower in my last 50, but to be honest, I was just glad that my Stormcallers came down in a reasonable position. I went Splash, because versus Link tanks, the Splash hits more of them, so it's like a multiplicative effect. Um, the regen on the tanks is a little bit annoying, it gives them a big health pool combined with the 120% free damage sharing. Um, but I think it's not a great pick into EMP snipers when I'm showing quite a lot of them. I'm showing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 snipers who've you know done a steady amount of damage all around and once they hit a tank, that tank is not going to regen, it's not going to lifelink. It does get the health bonus though, so the 120% health and the 35% oh, 30 health, so 150% bonus health does stick around even after the EMP, so it's still a very strong tech. Oh, and I've spoken for too long. Let's see how much combat power we've gained or lost. 20 MMR and 800 combat power. That feels good. And let's see where we're in the tournament. The third. Nice. Well, thank you for watching as always. Sorry about the slight delay. Life sometimes gets a bit ahead of me, but I wouldn't want it any other way. A pleasure as always, and I'll see you tomorrow for the next round.